Hello, I'm Lonnie West, and today I'd like to show you how I take an existing project that was recorded in Sonar Platinum and synchronize it to a tempo inside Sonar. In this case, we'd have a live recording of this particular song to no click track at all, and the tempo tends to wander all over the place. So there's four phases to uh, doing this correction. The first part is to actually set the project tempo to match what was actually recorded. Then we set the uh, individual tracks that are already recorded and set them using uh, Audio Snap to allow them to stretch when you make changes. Then we go back and edit the tempo to what we'd like to have and render the final audio. You don't want to do this on a, a final recording. Um, there are uh, artifacts that are introduced during the stretching process, but I have to admit uh, it does a great job with it. But it's not something you'd want on a final recording. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my snap here so I don't uh, snap to uh, my existing timeline. Um, I'm going to set my tempo to close to what the project was recorded at. So I tapped it out and it's at 142 right now. And you'll notice it looks like it makes some changes to the waveforms, but it doesn't. Uh, it's just rescaling it. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and line up my first beat to uh, the beginning of a measure, just to just kind of give me a starting point. So I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to select all these tracks, and then I'm just going to take that first hit there, and I'm going to just kind of line that up. Uh, there we go. It doesn't have to be exact. So to do this, uh, the trick is to actually find some tracks that have some transients that are detected. So the uh, the kick drum, the snare drum are, are really good places to start working with this. So a nifty trick to do this is if you select a particular track and you hit the tab key, Sonar will jump to each transient that it sees, which is a great tool. So I know this this uh, second hit on the on the kick um, that's where my, my first measure is going to be. So I'm going to tab over. So I'm now going to zoom in so we can see what we're looking at there. So we're now actually locked in on that first kick drum. And then if you go into the project menu item, you'll see, you'll see an item that says set measure beat at now, shift M. If you hit that, this dialog pops up and it tells, it gives you a measure and a beat that you're saying that I want to set for that location. So I hit OK. It now lines up my tempo scale at, at that point. So now I can go back. I'm going to go back and click on my overhead because I have my, I can see my snare, or my uh, hi-hat hits on there. So we know that one's at beat five. Each of these actually hit on the quarter. So I'm going to I'm going to tab over so I get that first one. I'm going to shift M once again. Now you notice it's assuming that I'm in measure three, but I know that that, that hi-hat beat, I actually want as the first beat in measure four. So I'm going to change that to four, one. Now you'll notice, it's like my timeline's changed. It's now locked in there. So I'm going to repeat this process. Tab over to my next transient, shift M. I'm going to make that 4, 2. Tab over again, shift M, 4, 3. Tab over, shift M, 4, 4. So now if I play this, just this beginning piece, I should hear that it's locked into a metronome. All right, that's pretty cool. It's a good start. So the the rest of it is kind of following that same path. You're going to go through and identify each of the parts of the song that line up to the beginning of a measure. So I'm going to go back to my kick drum, and I'm just going to tab over. So I know that these hits happen every two measures. So that was at measure five. This guy should be right at measure seven. So I'm going to shift M. Now what this does is this sets the tempo. Each time you hit shift M and you accept it, Sonar calculates the tempo between the last and the and the current. So now it's kind of said, all right, well, the tempo here is 139.92. So we're going to kind of keep advancing through this track and doing the same thing. Just transient over to a beat that I know is going to be on the beginning of a measure, shift M. 
That's going to be 9 1. That's great. Okay, so now that we have them all lined out, if we go back and at least preview this, we should hear that uh, the song lines up with our metronome. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So let's pull up our tempo view to see what we have here. So we're gonna go under views, tempo. So yeah, we can see that we, we wander all over the place. But when the song was originally demoed out, um, it, it sounds great at about 150. It has a very frantic pace, and here it's a little bit more laid back. So the whole point on this one is getting this mapped out, and then we're gonna go ahead and bump this up to 150. At this point, we have the project tempo matching our actual audio. So this is a good point to go ahead and save your project um, before you start making any changes. This way, if there's any uh, hiccups, you can always go back to an earlier state. Okay, now that we have the project saved as, a, as another project, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, set our tracks so that they follow any changes. So we're going to select all tracks. I'm just going to hit one, shift A, and then we're going to open, open up our audio snap by hitting alt A. That's also up in the menus somewhere, but uh, I'm used to using the shortcuts for this. So we have all, tra make sure you have all tracks selected, uh, at least all the ones that you want to stretch. And you're going to turn on audio snap by hitting the little power button on here. And you'll notice that the, the change and it shows hit markers. And then you're going to go, you're going to find this little clip follows project. You're going to hit the down arrow and you're going to make sure it's set for auto stretch. Um, I think the default is clip when you originally uh, do this, but since it, last time I used it, it's set to auto stretch. And then you're going to hit this little icon that says toggle clip follows project. And this is basically telling all the clips that now any changes that I make to the project tempo, those clips are going to follow that project. So now we're going to go ahead and start making some changes to our tempos. So we have our tempo um, chart open, so we're going to hit the little icon up here. It says show hide tempo list, which is a shift T if you're using shortcuts. And you'll get a list open on the side. And it'll basically show all the tempos that we marked. So what we're going to do is actually delete all these except for the very first one. I'm going to take the last one. I'm going to go all the way up to the second one. And I'm going to delete them. Then I'm going to double click on the very first one. And I'm going to change this to 150, which is where I want uh, the project to be. And I'll hit OK. Now you'll notice our tempo map is flat. So let's see what this actually does to our audio. All right, the audio has a slightly washed out sound. Now this is because that um, audio stretch or audio snap has two different rendering modes. So I'm gonna hit Alt A to open this up again. Um, and there's a online and offline render mode. So when you're previewing it, you'll notice that audio snap is still on. It shows all that, that all the clips are have audio snap enabled. So when you're playing it um, as a preview inside uh, sonar it's using a lower quality rendering um, it's not the same thing that you're going to get as final audio so if you're happy with where the changes are and the tempo is right um, and this you know you can experiment around with this so let's say for example we like a really lethargic song we're going to make it 120 just to see what some extreme changes would be let's see what that sounds like Okay, 
that's just going to make me slip my wrists. So 150 is where I like this project to be. Okay, so what we need to do is then just render our clips. So what you'll do is you'll set, you know, once again, select all your clips. And then you'll go into the clip menu and you will bounce to clips. Now when you bounce to clip, basically that tells Sonar that any changes that you have made under Audio Snap you're going to go ahead and render those in high quality and save those as new clips and link those clips in Sonar. So this takes a little bit to process, but it's going to go through each one of these clips. It'll render it out in high quality, save it as a new clip in the same folder with your project audio, and then replace all these audio snap clips with the rendered audio. So I'm going to flip over and uh, I'm going to show you a before and after because um, right now the audio that you're hearing for this video is just kind of patched in. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like with the high quality render. Not bad. I mean, you can hear some artifacting in there from the stretching, but it's not as bad as what I was expecting it to be. So at this point, uh, you've got your changes. You're happy with it. Once again, I like to save as as a new revision, uh, always giving me the ability to go back and make changes if I if I want to. But that's the process. I hope that helps you. If you have any questions, uh, please comment, um, and I uh, hope this makes it a little clear because there are a lot of different tutorials out there showing a bunch of different ways of doing this. Uh, this is the easiest way that I've found it for my workflow to do. So have a good day.